Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be using Kerbal Space Program and a little bit of Space Engine to basically talk about the moon and our adventure of colonization of the moon, but specifically we'll talk about the possible dangers of living there. If you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button right now because there's so many more videos coming in the future. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so what I wanted to actually do is use Kerbal Space Program and this beautiful, uh, I guess you could call it a moon base that I've created using just the stock parts. And we're going to basically land it, explore the moon a little bit, but we're most importantly, we'll be talking about the, um, the idea of toxicity of lunar dust. Now, this is actually based on one of your suggestions of you wonderful people. And I'm sorry that I actually forgot who suggested this video, but um, it's it's actually based on a paper that you can find in the description below that uh, was published in 2015, uh, actually less than a year ago. And it talks about how um, toxic or not toxic lunar dust might be and uh, what happens to uh, or what may happen to humans if one day we decide to actually colonize the moon and what we can maybe consider or we should what we should consider um, if we decide to actually start a mining colony and start working there as well. Now, as you may probably guess, the moon is actually covered um, with dust. As a matter of fact, one of the first things that uh, we observed when we landed on the moon is that uh, it's covered by a very fine dust, a very thin layer of fine dust that may be actually dangerous for us if we um, inhale it while working um, inside a colony. And so these uh, experimenters, or I guess these researchers, decided to find out if uh, this moon dust was toxic to people by essentially using rats. Rats are very, very similar to humans in many respects and um, they decided to basically have them inhale uh, various amounts of lunar dust that we've recovered from the moon back in the days and then uh, see what happens to those poor rats uh, when you actually expose them for several days up to actually 13 weeks. And the reason they decided to do this is because, well, first of all, we know that on Earth there are many different um, dust-related disorders, including something called pneumono ultramicroscopic silica volcanic coniosis, which also happens to be one of the longest words in the English dictionary. Now, uh, so-called silica coniosis, or uh, shortly silicosis, is uh, basically a disease that many miners back in the day developed because of the inhalation of various um, very thin particles uh, during essentially mining work. And this uh, disease, this silicosis uh, condition, can actually be quite dangerous. Uh, well, first of all, some of the first symptoms is shortness of breath, cough, fever, um, bluish skin, but it can also um, lead to eventual death and uh, symptoms similar to tuberculosis. As a matter of fact, every year about 50,000 people globally die from this condition, so it's actually somewhat dangerous. And uh, these researchers decided to find out, well, you know, is lunar dust just as dangerous or possibly even more dangerous as some of the other things that we have on Earth. And of course the idea here was to find out not only if it's dangerous, but uh, how long can we potentially live on the moon without really experiencing these uh, silicosis con um, symptoms? Or in other words, how long can you stay on the moon safely? And to be more scientific, what these researchers did is they actually compared uh, lunar dust to two common um, dusts that we have on Earth that often cause conditions. And specifically here, they did actually um, compare it to quartz uh, fine particles and also um, titanium oxide particles which are actually a little bit more dangerous. And unfortunately for the poor rats, um, well, basically they were the experimental guinea pigs, or I guess in this case lab rats, uh, for this experiment. And all of them were essentially uh, exposed to lunar dust, exposed to quartz and titanium oxide. All of them were then um, very, very nicely killed or euthanized. And uh, their lungs were then explored for various um, known conditions that often occur in humans as well. And without going into too much detail, basically uh, the findings indicated that, well, yes, lunar dust is quite toxic. It's not as toxic as titanium oxide, but it's more toxic than quartz. And um, essentially here, a human being would really have to be really careful living on the moon. Every single rat who was actually exposed to the lunar dust um, had quite a lot of deposits in their lungs, which would eventually lead to quite a lot of various disorders. 
And even though uh, most of this dust is eventually eliminated from your lungs, if you continuously live on the moon and if you continuously breathe in these particles that would probably be almost everywhere, um, there's a very high chance for developing various disorders. And because this was actually a scientific paper, um, these researchers also were able to establish um, a relatively safe level of exposure, which basically would have to be monitored on, um, on any kind of a lunar base that we establish in the future. So as a matter of fact, they've determined that for a base, for a lunar base to be actually safe for humans, uh, where they can essentially live as long as they want, the exposure limit for lunar dust has to be something like 0 0.06 milligrams per cubic meter, uh, which is essentially a very very little amount of uh, lunar dust present uh, which would be actually quite difficult to attain because lunar dust is essentially everywhere on the moon. And I guess so in conclusion what I actually wanted to add is that uh, these uh, studies actually were funded by NASA Human Research Program which also suggests that NASA is slowly preparing for um, eventual return to the moon with essentially a base uh, where people will be working and living um, continuously. And uh, the data from this particular study showed that, you know, if we actually bring a human being there for at least 180 days, or I guess half a year, uh, then they are allowed to only breathe in about 0 0.06 milligrams per cubic meter of this lunar dust, or they might actually end up with a very serious condition similar to the so-called miner's lung, which does kill 50,000 people a year. But anyway, so that's all I really wanted to say in this particular video. I decided to actually focus on a very kind of a scientific paper, which was suggested by one of you guys, and uh, just kind of give you an idea of how NASA actually is uh, doing work and how they actually use science to try to uh, anticipate potential problems for humans in space. And specifically here, we're talking about on the moon. Now, next time you play Kerbal Space Program or next time you play any other space game where you actually do visit the moon, Remember that there's actually this really dangerous, somewhat toxic um, dust there that is pretty much everywhere. And so if we actually end up living here one day, we have to deal with quite a lot of problems, not limited to, of course, things like radiation and things like Earth or I guess moonquakes, which are quite dangerous as well, but uh, even small things like lunar dust. And anyway, thank you so much for watching and hopefully you learned something from this video. Hopefully you'll also subscribe and share this video with your friends or someone else who might enjoy learning something from these videos. I'll see you guys in the next video and game you later. And as always, bye bye.